This screencast will walk you through the process of setting up the mono wall traffic shaper feature to accommodate a handful of voice over IP devices on your network. Um, the beginning of this process starts with doing a little bit of homework. Uh, even before you get to the configuration of the mono wall router, you're going to need to know what the worst case available bandwidth is to your uh, ISP. Uh, in this case, I've gone out and I've done a day's worth of testing. Uh, that is, I've tested at various times of the day with speed tests to various different server points around the country. And what I've determined is that while Comcast says this cable modem connection is supposed to be 8 megabits down and 768 kilobits up, I'm actually getting a worst case measured performance of 7537k down and 721k up. And this is the basis of, of where we start configuring the traffic shaper in MonoWall because you need to know the actual available bandwidth not what they've sold you. It's a very good idea to start by going into diagnostics and making a backup of your uh, router's configuration. And MonoWall makes this very easy by letting you download one little XML file from which you can restore the router's entire configuration if you have to. After that, we'll go to the Traffic Shaper and look at what's made available to us. There are four parts to the Traffic Shaper, um, three really engaged in it, and one is a little uh, convenience tool. Rules, pipes, cues, and what we call the Magic Shaper Wizard. Now, it's in this Magic Shaper Wizard where we can get started. And as I said before, I've got uh, measurements for my actual achievable speed. I've got 7537K down and 721k outbound. Now what the Magic Shaper really is, is a macro that will go through and create all the necessary cues, pipes, and rules to give us a good starting point. Saves us having to set up an awful lot of things by hand. So once that's done, we tap Apply Changes, and now the router has taken up those settings. And now you can see there's a series of cues uh, queues are buffers um, into which uh, traffic is held uh, while it awaits transfer into a pipe. Pipes are the actual mechanism that conveys the data to and from uh, the ISP. And rules are a set of constructs for dividing the traffic on the basis of application. You can see there's a variety of different things, including rules for DNS, rules for ICMP, which would be responses to pings, and there's uh, rules for inbound and outbound traffic on the WAN connection. So let's examine uh, this idea of queues for a moment. Uh, queues are a set of weighted buffers. So a rule directs a, tra a bit of traffic into a particular queue, and then you can see by their various assigned weights that they will get greater or lesser priority as the uh, the traffic is passed out to the ISP or brought in. Um, buffers like this are by their nature uh, a problem for VoIP because all they do is add latency. So sometimes it's necessary or, or desirable to pass traffic uh, through the rule directly into the pipe that gives it the connection to the ISP and not dump it into a queue first. So here we've got our two pipes based on the numbers that we had put in before it's given us 7160 kilobits down and 649 kilobits up uh, so one pipe in each direction uh, that would normally be fine but since we're talking about VoIP traffic uh, I'd like to establish a couple of pipes that are dedicated solely to the VoIP traffic and hard set up the uh, allowable bandwidth for those so let's add a new one here. We'll make this pipe be for our uh, upload speed. What I'd like to do is I'd like to set aside 256k uh, of available bandwidth, uh, which would accommodate three simultaneous G711 standard toll quality calls. Uh, they consume um, about uh, 80k uh, per uh, with TCP overhead and whatnot. And all I really need to do here is set up the bandwidth allowed. Uh, I don't want to induce or incur any additional delay or, or, or make any other adjustments except to give this a, uh, a label and call it dedicated VoIP outbound and save. Now because we've gone and applied some of the bandwidth uh, 
that we would have on our total upload to the uh, the dedicated VoIP column, I'll, I'll need to go in here and adjust that downward from 649 to uh, 649 less 256, which is 393. There we go. So in concert, those two are 649 kilobytes, but we're assigning 256 kilobits worth uh, to the, the VoIP traffic on the outbound side. Now on the inbound side, uh, rather than taking the entire 7125K, I'd like to take 256 and assign that to Dede. Oops. dedicated VoIP inbound and having done that I need to revisit this uh, total upload pipe and take 256 off that which will give us 68, 69k which is still a decent amount of traffic for general downloading. Having made these changes now I tap apply changes they'll be uh, taken up by the, uh, the router core Now we can move on to establishing some rules to direct the VoIP traffic into the, the pipes that we've set up. So we can go to the rules page, way down at the bottom where we can add a rule. Uh, the first thing we have to select is the target for this rule. And we'd like uh, traffic to, that meets this rule to be passed into our pipe number three, which is our dedicated VoIP outbound pipe. Uh, we need it to deal with the WAN interface because it'll be outbound traffic. And normally, uh, most traffic would be TCP, but in this case, I would set it for UDP, which is going to um, mean that the media streams for the VoIP calls will match the rule. And now, the source on my LAN, I'm going to allow to be a range of network addresses. The way I handle things is I have the DHCP server in the router, reserve network addresses for my VoIP devices at .128 and higher. So by setting this to 192.168.1.128 and then specifying the um, subnet range to 25, what I've done is I've said all addresses 128 and above are going to be able to match this rule. Uh, I'm not particularly concerned about what ports are involved or what destinations on the other side of the router or anything like that are involved. Although I do know that this is an outbound rule, so I only need to match outbound traffic. Uh, as we get lower down here in the settings on the menu, uh, this is where we can establish um, some uh, type of service or TOS tags as well. Uh, we want low delay and uh, maximum throughput. And then we will give this rule a dedicated VoIP outbound. a name and save it. Now that rule is going to show up way at the bottom and uh, this being something that we think is perhaps a high priority thing you may want to go about the process of moving it up stack Unfortunately, uh, there's no easy way to do that. I'll show you uh, going about it a couple of different times. You just use little arrows here to move it up. But you get the point. So the next thing we'll need is a rule to match our inbound VoIP traffic. And so we want to, again, go down to the bottom and add another rule. In this particular case, the rule is going to match uh, dedicated VoIP inbound, which would be pipe number four on the WAN interface and again dealing with UDP. Uh, in practice you could probably say any protocol here because we really don't care but by saying UDP it specifies the media streams explicitly. Uh, the source in this case we don't particularly care about because the source is going to be on the other side of the network or the other side of the WAN. Uh, what we do care about is the destination and here again we'll specify network 192.168.1.128 uh, subnet set 25 uh, on inbound traffic 
and again low delay and maximum throughput on the TOS and this becomes dedicated VoIP inbound. Save that setting. We've got this new rule. Uh, so now we have two new rules, one governing VoIP inbound. We should probably move it up quite a bit. Uh, I like to put these things at the top, but we'll just leave them where they are for now. Um, once you've applied the changes, then the traffic shaper uh, should uptake uh, the new rules, new pipes, etc. And you should be good to go.